Dr. Cass, as we've been talking about, as, as uh, Dr. Kraft said as well, is that these people, when they go over here, they have the, the, when they're on Mars, they have free reign to decide how they want to structure their society, how they're going to decide to live. Now, how does that work for, say, the second mission that comes down, and the third mission that comes down? How are they going to incorporate into that? Does the structure change? Do you, how do you anticipate that working out? Uh -huh. This is a very something very challenging. It will be a very exciting time, and this is what we hope we can also, in some ways, uh, simulate on the Earth, because the first people there feel ownership. They are the pioneers, and these, the second group, in a sense, are interlopers. They are the next ones who are stealing in on the limelight <laughs> on one hand, putting it negatively. Putting it positively, it will make it much more exciting. These four people finally have four more Earthlings with them, and they will finally double. They'll, it will be exciting because they will find that they'll be able to interact with more people. And unlike a group on the Earth which may be annoyed about interlopers, which I'm sure they will be to a certain extent, they will be much more excited in having these additional beings there, increasing the amount of people they can interact with. It's getting boring, just those four people together. So I think the positive effect of it will be far, far greater than these uh, well-known negative effects. And this will be different from the Earth, because on the Earth, the more people who join the group, uh, trying to achieve a, pro uh, a goal, often the original ones are a bit annoyed. It was exciting having a small group, and now they're just one of a larger number, and they're not so happy about it. However, on Mars, it'll be very different, because they will finally have more people to interact with. So we're not, we cannot always have the same parallel uh, about what's happening on the Earth and what's going to be happening on Mars. Now, has, has there been any, have you noticed in during the whole selection process, <coughs> excuse me, as, <coughs> pardon me, getting all worked up, you're talking about Mars. Uh, so have you noticed any similarities in, this, uh, in the process of people who are applying for this? Are there any sort of similarities, or is there a big wide range of spectrum of the people that are becoming, uh, want to become involved in Mars 1? No, I'm very excited. I said, if we just look at professions, there are professions you haven't even thought about is included. We have all the professions through the bank, and the ones you have no idea they even exist are there too. So really we have the huge variety, we have the huge variety around the world. Interesting is, is to see if you look at gender. That's one of the interesting things. You have Western Europe where uh, females are very few, very minimal. And then you have California, you have the US, you have Canada where the females are very high. You have Eastern Europe too, females are high. So that's was fascinating to see where females apply or not com compared to male comparison. So that, that's, that's one of the interesting things. But we really have it, anybody, anything you can think about applied and joined, and this makes it so exciting. You have it really the total mix you want from, from every side, from Russia, uh, from, from culture, from race, from religion, ev everybody applied. We had one from Palestine, one from Israel, from United Arabs. So really from, from any, from West Africa, from South, a lot of South Africa, for example. So really it's very exciting. Now, uh, for, for this though, it's just in terms of how you're selecting, is so, so many people from around the world, is language an obstacle? Or that 10 years, yeah, you could select somebody and they'd have time to learn English or whatever language you'd like to have them learn? Oh, we push it a lot faster already. So we say English is language, and I think it's, it doesn't harm anybody to learn English. It's, it's, it's not so difficult to learn like <laughs> other languages are really difficult. So and we said already in our coming interview, we want them to speak English. We will have for specific ones who request on that some translator, but they won't interpret them immediately. They give them phrases or vocabularies they don't know, but we want to push them already to speak English. And when they are 24, they have to speak English. Um, enough. We don't, they don't need to write essays beautifully. They don't, uh, don't need to be perfect in reading, but we want really that they communicate in English. And it will be interesting when they have a lack, or uh, a lot of them have a very strong accent, how they work it out together. Because that's something interesting to see too. I you say, oh, I don't understand this guy, I don't talk to him. Or um, to really try to say, oh, I don't understand, how do I get the information out of him? And this, I think, because we stream it too, will be uh, for... Um, uh, all the companies and, and families too who work internationally. So we have the American companies who work with India, who work with China and so on. And um, there are problems with accents and very strong accents and they have difficulty to understand. So 
how to find work better as a team, try to understand the other person, even if you have a very strong accent, to work with it. Now, Dr. Cass, as somebody that watched the landing of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, just as a participant, you're watching there on TV and seeing this happen. Now, flash forward here, you're having a chance to be actually a participant in putting some of the first people ever to set foot on Mars. How does that excite you? What are you excited about being involved in this project? Oh, well, in that sense, uh, if we do uh, actually achieve uh, putting the first people on Mars, uh, I think that will be uh, extremely exciting being part of it. I know I was very excited about uh, sending the first crew to the, uh, uh, as scientists on the first space lab mission back in 1983. I trained the first German astronaut, Old Meribolt, and uh, later the first uh, Dutch astronaut, Hugo Ockels and uh, even the first uh, Swiss astronaut and uh, so on. So it was exciting, but it was it's uh, much more exciting, I, I think it will be, uh, not simply to have trained that crew map, but be part of that mission, uh, this historic mission, putting the first people on Mars. That is uh, really, to be part of that is something uh, extremely exciting. And I think all the people involved, whether they be those building the rocket, building the robots to build up the habitats, they are those the scientists doing that. There will be hundreds of people. I will, uh, we, our little team will uh, not be the only ones or the central ones. We will be part of a far larger team. Hopefully we'll have a lot of other people on board or we will be on board with others. Uh, and hopefully uh, NASA and other space agencies will uh, uh, get uh, this excitement and it will be contagious and uh, it will be a collaborative effort. We've got the two of you together here. Do you guys want to have a quick meeting here? We can just sit back. <laughs> we'll, we'll just, you know, let you guys talk about some stuff. If you guys want to, you know, since it's a chance you get us to sync up today, we can we can back up. Oh, we up. don't want to bore you. Don't tell. <laughs> we up to date. We up to date. We always keep right. each other up to date. <laughs> no worries, Dr. Cass. Thank you so much for joining us. I wish you the best of luck with everything, and I I'm excited for you to be able to uh, watch everybody land here on the first time on the first people uh, first manned mission on Mars. Okay, I hope I will be able to, uh, live to watch it and it won't take as long as the big delays that occurred with the shuttle and other uh, programs and at this time uh, we will get things done a little bit uh, faster. But even if it takes us 15 years instead of 10, we will uh, have done it much faster than many of the other programs. That's fantastic. So, thank you and thank you. goodbye for now. Take care, Dr. Good luck to the rest of the program. Thank you. All right, Dr. Kraft and I are going to be back in just a little bit here. You're watching the Internet's talk show, WatchHollywood.tv.